Hello, two men walk in to the octagon and one walks out. Well, unless you count the referee or unless you count a melee that happens in the octagon. Hello, this is Octagon St. Laveau and I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we basically talk about um, MMA, UFC facts, Bellator facts, history, and history of the octagon. Um, I usually start out with the professors, MMA professors that I've been uh, looking at at YouTube because they were the ones who fed my interest in MMA, UFC, and Bellator fighting championships. I've realized that I'm much more in the documentaries than I am into the actual fighting, but we'll talk about that later. Um, let's start off with my favorite YouTube shows. One is the wonderful Mr. Curve and Reverend Kitty of Alpaca Thesaurus. Mr. Curve is a smooth talking newt and he knocks it out of the park with his psychological breakdowns. He's my favorite right now. I really like him a lot. Um, my second favorite is Mr. Mix Molly Whoppery, who sort of has an accent of these, them, and those guys. His videos are action-packed with lots of music in the background and um, lots of cussing and swearing. I don't mind it one bit. Um, my next third favorite, it's a tie between Mind Smash and Weasel. The Weasel he seems to be um, on the young side, but his breakdowns are incredible. He's totally an unbiased uh, observer of the sport, and my hat's off to him. Mr. Mind Smash is also young, just as incredible. His psychological breakdowns and his observations on what is to be a warrior are most excellent. Then we have the fun stuff, MMA on point, which is sort of the list verse of the MMA world, but they do other stuff uh, more than that too. So please check them all out. And last but not least, my crush, Mr. Chael Sonnen. And um, Chael is, uh, I think he's just perfect as an announcer. And they really need to cast him in um, some of those uh, Mike Lawyer, uh, uh, Lawyer movies about Joe DiMalco. Uh, they're usually called House Rules, but they're seven novels based on a guy who um, his dad used to work for the mob, but he's a lawyer working for a high-powered senator in D.C. Chael Sonnen would be perfect for the part. So let's take a wish out for Mr. Chael and hope that they give him some uh, movie time someday. So on with a breakdown. Now, October 6th, Khabib and Connor. No one could guess the outcome of this one. Because the pressers, press conferences had been so spooky, both of them. Um, and unsettlingly, unsettlingly unpleasant. I was moving towards Khabib because he seemed very calm. Uh, part of that was the language barrier. And part of that is that I think he and Fado Emilienko kind of share the type of warrior killer stance that you just can't really know what you don't understand you don't know what they're thinking it's not only because they're fighters but it's also another culture and cultures are different if you go from one to the next these guys um aren't as uh what do you call it, expressive as most fighters so uh during the press conferences khabib either was quiet or he would retreat and withdraw only a few times to be spar verbally with connor um I could not count out Mr. McGregor because he is a genius at striking and fighting. He's a true fighting man. What a warrior. Uh, because the, the first press conference had involved him bringing up a bottle of whiskey, uh, and then the second press conference involved Khabib leaving, Khabib leaving before Connor even got there. Everything was tinged. Bizarrely for me, it didn't look like the fun pressers I'd been watching over at the Bellator camp, where there's some verbal sparring, but there's not um, violence in the words and violent hijinks. At the same time, these guys are fighters. They're not, they're not going to walk in the park together before or after the fight. So now let's go to uh, my actual looking at the fight. I wish I'd taken some notes. I just thought it would always be on YouTube, but... Um, the, the segment, the fight that I saw, well, I'll backtrack. 
I woke up at quarter to five in the morning, October 7th. I had a little bottle of Grey Goose to celebrate. I go over to see who won. I see the thumbnail of Habib having the belt. So I know he, he's won. Um, not surprised. And then I uh, go to where I can watch the fight. And then I see a thumbnail where there was melee after the fight. So I go to the fight. The announcer, I think that was Joe Rogan, announced the fight. And then the commentary was in Russian, which I adored because I was able to not have all the noise in the ear. I would have turned the sound down if it had been in English, but um, I just didn't feel like doing it while I was in Russian. So I was able to observe what, what went down. So um, from what I remember, the grappling happened very quickly in the first round. And it was a sustained grappling. Uh, the audience, after this went on for some minutes, started to boo, which I found very annoying. They just wanted to see, you know, people get their brains bashed out and lost striking a lot of blood, but um, Habib's a grappler, and I thought Connor was uh, very clever to um, make that as a component in his strategy. So what I've been learning about strikers and grapplers is that the striker is, has a powerful, powerful punch, and he's fast, but he's expending a lot of energy, whereas the grappler um, is more about uh, tenacity and um, I want to say sustained motion, but uh, they have more uh, staying power. Uh, I believe their cardio is more intense. I'm sure that uh, Habib Namagedov and Tony Ferguson's cardios are off the chart, just intense, intense, and that is a fight I'd, I'd like to see. So uh, by the there was something, I think it happened the second or third round. Habib rocked Connor, uh, hit him. And uh, he did get knocked down. I can't remember what round that was, but I could see Connor tiring. Uh, you could, um, his, his face, his eyes were sort of, um, they weren't high, high up or concentrating. They were kind of low. You know, he's not looking down, and he kept, uh, putting his hand out. Mr. Curve of Alpaca Thesaurus said something to the effect of it's uh, um, what he does for those of us who are not familiar with that, um, with his habit of doing that. But it looked a little bit odd to me and he kept sort of kick, kicking out. I didn't understand that, but I did understand the grappling. I didn't understand when the fouls were taking place. I studied that um, after the fight. I went over to my websites and People talked about the fouls. So um, I see Connor down. I see some ground and pound. The fight's over. And then I go to the thumbnail and press where the melee happened. And then after I see the melee, uh, there, I guess Connor's camp was saying stuff to Habib while he was fighting Connor. And then I watch the announcers. Uh, poor mouth, uh, Mr. Namagadoff, because. Connor has been saying all these horrible things about his family and his mama and his papa and his country, whatever, but he's not supposed to explode. So uh, Chael and Dude Man, he's ESPN guy and he's not a fighter. I don't know, all respect, I don't know what you were doing there, dude. And um, I wish Tyrone Woodley had been there and it was somebody else. And they were um, shaming Habib in doing that. But excuse me, Chael, if someone, you are the... Mr. American Gangster from Westland, Oregon, if someone dissed your family and your country, you would have given them a do dose of whoop-ass, two shakes of lamb's tail. So that's how I look at it. These men are fighters. They're not, they don't teach kindergarten. They're fighters. Okay, so I've ignored all the other stuff that came after. I've ignored the, he's not going to get the, his money. He's not going to get his belt. Everything's fine. The UFC, because they promoted this fight in such a disgraceful manner, and I'm sorry, but it's true, they kept playing the uh, trailer of Connor throwing the dolly at the bus about a year and a half ago. I got sick of watching that. It, to me, it's not part of the dialogue. It's something that occurred, and it was actually a criminal act, which is why I was amazed it was in the presser. But at the same time, um, 
if it's played over and over again, it loses its punch and power. And it looks like mob hijinks. It doesn't, it looks like WWE, which is what some of us are kind of trying to get away from in our fighting. We, we want the real thing. So at any rate, um, I was glad that that was sort of my first, technically my first fight. Um, I have yet to do pay-per-view, but I'm thinking I'm going to get UFC Fight Pass and to um, uh, follow the advice of Mr. Curve, go into some of the history of um, UFC MMA. All right, so we'll talk about, we'll talk a little bit more about Habib and Connor in future episodes. Um, it's something that one will always go, uh, this particular fight, people are going to revisit it for a few months, I'm thinking. So it's going to be fresh in everybody's heads. Um, all right, so the next fight I'd like to talk about was the one that happened this past Saturday night that took me by surprise because I don't pay enough attention to Bellator, Scott Coker's outfit as I should, and that was the match between Chael Sonnen and Fedor Emelianenko. Fedor Emelianenko is one of the greats of UFC. He's up there with Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell, all right? Um, the guy is an intense, amazing athlete, a stone-cold killer, but um, I can't say that he's a killer because I'm sure he's just like an ordinary guy, you know, in real life, but he's very lethal in the um, octagon. So Chael Sonnen is, to me, GOAT, which is greatest fighter of all time because he will fight anybody. And I don't care about his losing record. He will fight anyone. He's totally unafraid, which makes me afraid for him because he's like 41. And fighters don't really quit until they kind of have to quit. And so I was worried that Fedor was going to kill him in the ring. Yes, I was. He was going to murder my American gangster. So that didn't happen, but it was a quick fight. And I'm not surprised. What I adore about Chael is that I saw the presser after the fight. He came out. He's, he's cut. He, he doesn't look bad. You could tell he was in a fight. But he was cheerful, uh, losing. He's graceful. He was funny. He, uh, self, uh, he had good humor about himself. And that's a gangster, all right? Plus, he's very handsome. I can't help but say that. And I'm sure Mrs. Brittany doesn't mind. So um, watching, I didn't watch that fight. I watched the highlights, and that card was incredible. Um, and, of course, I didn't really pay attention to everybody else who was fighting. I, I wish I had, but it was an incredible card. The card, uh, the UFC card on the 6th in Las Vegas with uh, Khabib and um, Connor. Uh, featured a fight between uh, Mr. Pettis and Mr. Ferguson. And there's just one picture where they're both totally bloody. Uh, it's hard to look at. And I'm realizing that it's not just a sport, it's a savage sport. So during the chat session that I was looking at while Chael and the guy from ESPN and the other gentleman were talking about the fight in Las Vegas, I was looking at the, the, the chat running down, and someone, people were, <laughs> people were being kind of funny, but someone said, the sport is demonic. And the thing is, is that it's one thing to, you know, you do your thing, and you like UFC, and you like MMA, and you like Bellator, and you read and you think about what it is to be a warrior, and how it's all right to follow the path and not be afraid of death or whatever. But then when it comes right down to an ordinary life, it's always probably good to know a little um, self-defense. Hello. Okay. So a lot of what we read on paper, for instance, this book by Kochi Tohei, The Book of Chi, The Zen Way to Martial Arts by Tazian Deshmero, and Taekwondo Basics, Keith Yates and H, uh, Brian Robbins. You can read about this stuff, but applying it into your life takes work and energy. So I did a simple experiment uh, a few days ago where uh, I walked like the apex predator. I was walking down the street. My chest is out. I'm doing breathing exercise. It's something that Mind Smash and uh, not Tazian, but someone here recommends. And it takes a lot of energy. 
um, it doesn't take much energy just to kind of slump over, do your thing, look down the ground, but it takes a lot of energy to have controlled breathing while you're walking and you're walking back and you're walking like you're a movie star, you know, getting your Oscar, okay? So these men expend incredible amounts of energy doing what they do and it's a discipline. It's only a discipline of the body, it's a discipline of the mind, which means that um, as you are, if, if you do practice and start to um, acquire uh, martial art techniques, your soul is also learning. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I like uh, this fighting sport. But I, I'm understanding that it's not all fun and games and there's an, an attractive side to it. The side of these men fighting in combat with one another is not the unattractive side. I think the unattractive side is um, maybe pe fans not understanding that they wouldn't last two seconds in a ring with any of these heroes. And maybe some of these promoters aren't as, you know, even keeled as the next, but um, to me it's still the pure sport that I can see. Um, I, Daniel Cormier cried in the wing, ring last year, but I don't see any of them um, exhibiting signs of, of um, weakness, okay, on the playing field. So I think that that's almost it for me. I will mention that while I was checking out this press, those two press conferences, I could not help but remember this past summer when I was watching Mick Smalley Wapri's extant trilogy uh, uh, discussing Rose Demayunas and Joanna Jacek's uh, battle. Uh, Joanna was the reigning champion, and during the press conferences, she was always shouting, you know, shouting out to uh, Rose and being aggressive and telling her she was the boogie woman she was going to come to get her. And then, uh, uh, oh, pardon me. I believe that was Alpaca Thesaurus's excellent. Pardon me, I'm getting my guys mixed up there. Alpaca the Soros' excellent trilogy concerning um, their combat, their, their match. At any rate, what occurred was that Mr. Korov broke it down to the fact that Joanna was doing a lot of yelling, but Rose was controlling her emotions and she was controlling her breathing so that she can concentrate on what was going to go down in the ring. And believe me, Joanna didn't come out. Okay, all right, that's where trash talk gets you. I mean, you're not happy. If, if you're going to trash talk, you got to back it up. So the other um, example, well, the other example I thought of while I was looking at Connor do his thing with Habib, trying to get his, into his head, was the Ronda Rousey route, route by Holly Holm and then a year later by Amanda Nunes. And um, there are fans in the MA world who... Um, I got tired of Rhonda sort of being a bully. Um, when you have an attitude as a fighter that, yeah, you can do anything and you're all right and you can kick anyone's ass, I think that that's a very dangerous attitude to have, especially when I've seen a couple of these fighters make so much money and then it's like the money made them soft. I think sometimes fighting, I think some of these fighters are at their best when they're hungry, you know, when life is hard. And believe me, I think that that's what hones a person is a bit of discipline, a bit of adversity, a bit of you've got to knock in the tenacity. Sometimes you've got to fake it to make it. And uh, again, that's why I love um, uh, MMA, uh, UFC, Bellator. Now, um, one last thought. Uh, off the cuff last night, I caught a clip of Michael Bispig Bisping, Joey Diaz, and someone else. I didn't know who the gentleman was. I think he's another fighter. They're all talking about the fight. And Joey Diaz was mentioning about how you get soft, you get, you get soft when you make too much money. He said something about, uh, he was cursing about, I'm, so, I'm, just, I'm just old, I'm just fat. But he said that two years ago, he'd walked into a jiu-jitsu um, jiu training um, place. I guess in California, I'm not sure. And he they put him on something, and he was doing something, and he walked out, he was totally exhausted, he thought he was gonna have a heart attack. 
And then he, wa- he walked two blocks and he's like, no, I'm just going to keep trying it. And so as he was trying it, he was telling both uh, Bisping and the other gentleman that he, he had done everything. He has done everything, all types of combat, okay? I'm sure that's what he was saying. He'd done everything. But he has nothing but respect for um, adherence of jiu-jitsu because it takes a long time to get that black belt. All right. So I think that that's it for me. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau, spreading a little novice fever your way. All right. The show is about MMA, UFC, and Bellator Fighting Championships. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be back in a week or two. Um, I think that we're going to talk more about the Octagon, the history of the Octagon Part 2. We'll talk about the Octagon again. And maybe we'll discuss how... Um, you know, cardio plays a large part in a fighting man's um, winning streak. So until next time, you all, uh, peace, love one another, and um, take care of yourselves. Ciao.